So, good morning, everyone. I'm Sasha Piccione at uh, PhD student University of uh, Venice, and today I'm presenting a project that I've been working on with uh, Nicola Julian of AMT Atlantic, and the project regards uh, the way which people express emotion on Wikipedia when trying to collaborate on Wikipedia, and in particular, how the context influences the way in which such people express their emotion. So, in general, when we have to collaborate, we need to communicate because communication decreases the amount of uncertainty and also increases the uh, creativity. However, the ability to, um, to diminish the, um, the uncertainty depends on the way in which we speak and then the way in which we express emotion. Such language that we utilize and the emotion we express at the same time, they are not independent and they mostly depend on the personal characteristics, so for example the age, gender and education, but also on contextual factors, such as the characteristics of my interlocutor, but also the surrounding of the, um, of the project. Um, in particular, there are two main theories, like, such as general appraisal theory and mimicry, to try to understand the reasons that uh, push people to converge, uh, sometimes somehow unconsciously or unconsciously, to the same language, in particular to the same emotion expressed uh, by the others. The problem is, what happens when we don't have such clues, when we, the only thing we have is text we see in front of us, which is the case of open online collaborative communities, which are communities such as Wikipedia and Debian that developed great projects and by using only by using only computer mediated communication. Some theories, some theories utilize the synergy theory and others stress the, the importance of the artifact. The artifact that says what it tells us what other people have done, so what, what can we do, but in the case the text also provides the context, so how this thing has been done and what were the social processes that were underlying it. On Wikipedia, we have the articles, which are the, we can say, part of the artifact, but the other side, so the talk pages, uh, uh, give us the contextual elements that we need to understand what to do, in particular, how to enter to this process. In this part is the focus of this research. In particular, we focus on two emotions, which are violence and arousal, which are two emotions that are generally used in the specific, specific field of research, but also in psychology. And the first hypothesis is to test whether there is mimicry, and the second one stresses the appraisal theory, so the personal evaluation of the person, of the emotion that they perceive. Uh, when it comes to the data, we went to the um, 31 feature article published in uh, December of 2019 with the aim of having as neutral as possible um, articles. And then we followed uh, for many times the hyperlinks, obtaining a total of 300,000 pages in uh, articles. Then we went to each article and analyzed the talk pages and collected each comment, to obtaining a total of 1,000,000.4 comments. Each comment was, of course, connected, was enriched with the contextual elements, so everything that was written before the comment, but at the same time also about the elements of the author, of the, pa of the past action of the author that posted that comment. Then the, this data has been elaborated and analyzed. Focusing on the, um, the characteristics of the variables, it's important that we differentiate the levels of the context, focusing on the page level, which is the broader level. Then we have the thread level, which is the main specific discussion in which a person is posting a comment. And then we have the dyadic level, which is the possible relation, the exchange of comments with a specific person. This was very important for us because it might give also some relational dynamics that we might uh, consider. Then uh, we consider the past emotion of the of the user, and we consider that to be the baseline on the characteristic uh, emotion expressed by that person. And then we evaluate each emotion using word frequency averaging, and we use and we for the missing words we use word embeddings. This method has been uh, vastly used, and in particular in a recent paper of Gallus and Batia. And then we differentiate between absolute and relative emotion. The absolute is the evaluation we give to a given emotion, to a given text, while relative emotion is the difference between the absolute emotion and the um, um, baseline of the person that is seeing, observing that comment. In order to better stress the possible effect that the context has on the emotion expressed by the user, we, we consider only the most aggressive, let's say, and the least aggressive, so the bottom and the top 10%. Uh, looking then at the analysis, uh, we wanted to see in this case uh, the impact that the absolute value have of the, of the context, the emotional context has on the um, on expressing the emotions, and we can see that the context in general has an impact on the likelihood of having a high um, with a comment with high arousal or low 
or high balance. And in particular, the FRED level seems to be the most important. Similar results you can see also for the relative change of the person. So how a person changes from the baseline looking at the environment. Similar results we can see for the perceived emotional context in which we can, uh, which is basically how the person is about to write the comment, sees and perceives the context um, around himself, around himself, herself. What is very important for us is that uh, to see is to prove that the context has an impact, and in particular, the threat level has a higher impact compared to the others. This is mostly due to the fact that people, uh, when they have to, to start uh, to go into, inside a discussion, they must read what people have said. And in particular, what was very interesting for us was also the presence of the, um, of the relational dimension. So for the next step, one thing we want to do is, on the one hand, to deepen our and uh, broaden our um, study of the emotions, so it's different dimensions and different intensities, but also to understand, for example, what is the role of relational dynamics, uh, so if I interact with specific people. Another thing is to better understand contributors in terms of behavioral as aspects, so to try, for example, with some clustering approach, and eventually to connect the temperature of a discussion with the status of the page. So this is our presentation and thank you for your attention. Feel free to ask any question and goodbye.